I was an undergraduate at Columbia University, uh, New York City, 116th Street and Broadway. Right up the street from us, only four blocks away, is Riverside Drive Church, the largest carillon in the world. And I heard Camille Lefebvre, the great Belgian caroliner, playing there, and I was fascinated with this. And uh, even though I was a chemistry major and music was a sideline, if I didn't have a, a class or a lab or some other uh, responsibility, any time I could, I would get outside to hear him play. And I once went and asked if he would give me lessons, but he said I don't take uh, students. I was very disappointed in that. But I often say that I listen to him so much that I often like to say, I studied with Lefebvre, but he never knew it. Matthew Jr. Uh, I've played the Carillon at Middlebury College since 1985. A carillon is an instrument of at least 23 cup-shaped bells tuned so that they are harmonious with each other and played from a mechanical keyboard of levers which are better called battens such as you see here. In the summer of 84, one Saturday morning, I didn't have anything to do that day and I was looking forward to a nice uh, leisurely breakfast and the phone rang. A gentleman introduced himself as Emery Fanning. His choir had just done a concert in Greenwich, Connecticut and he wanted a demonstration of the carillon. Okay, finish my breakfast in a hurry, rushed down to church and there I met Emery Fanning and I met a man named Alan Dragon, who was the president of the Board of Trustees of the college at the time. And Professor Fanning said, uh, this is Mr. Dragon and he is going to give Middlebury College a carillon. So I answered all the questions I could and told him as much as I could about the carillon and we climbed up the 99 steps to the Stanford carillon and Mr. Dragon peppered me with questions. Why do these control wires go this way? Why do they have to reverse twice? What kind of screws are used here? Next thing, I was asked to come up here and evaluate the chime we had at the chime. At first, we thought we would add the 23 bells from a little carillon in a church in Massachusetts, and this would have made a three octave carillon. Mr. Dragon was in on the discussion, and he looked me right in the eye. He said, You really want four octaves, don't you? 
I said, yes. Uh, 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 he said, do it. I said, thank you, Mr. Dragon. So we went to the Packard Bell Foundry in annecy le vieux in France, and they built us a, a nice four octave carillon incorporating all but one of the old bells here. This beautiful row of bells from the largest one, which is about this high off the ground, to the little bitty one like this, and I thought, my God, that's going to be mine. I can't describe what I would call that. I will continue to play as long as I can play decently, and believe me, I'll know when I don't. Uh, Vladimir Horowitz used to say, if I miss practicing one day, I know it. If I miss practicing two days, my wife knows it. If I miss practicing three days, my public knows it. So it's something like that. <laughs> 